Hi again everybody, welcome to my latest video. I'm glad you could attend. Well in this video, I'm going to actually continue along the theme of getting ready for my live streaming event, eventually. Haven't decided on a date yet, but I'm progressing in that direction. So what I'm doing is I'm going to redo my little home studio here, which is really my office, but I'm going to turn it into more like a studio. I'm going to coin it PE for Doers Studio Rev 1. And there's going to be some, I think, rather significant changes. I'm going to put a backdrop that will come down from the ceiling. It'll be one of those straight paper backdrops that I can always roll back up again very easily. And I'm also going to clean up most of the clutter that you see around here. Both sides. I mean, that stuff is just going to go somewhere else. Most of it, probably about half of it could be thrown away, but not all of it. I'm also going to take this printer that's back here and I'm going to move it to the opposite end of the room. I have a wall connection for the Ethernet there as well, so it'll work out fine. I don't need it behind me. A few other slight little touch-ups to this, so we'll see how it goes. And I'll probably make a video or two showing how I'm doing these changes. Well, in preparation for that, I needed to find a piece of equipment that I had two of them and now I can't find one. So what we've done is we've gone out and bought a new one. And that is a wall stud finder. So this one was available and it was a good price. I haven't opened it up yet. It has a, sh a shrink wrap around it. It does have a microprocessor in it. I think one of my other ones also had a microprocessor in it as well but it was probably had too many features to it. This is pretty straightforward and simple and will do what I need it to do, not just for this job, but for going forward. So I'm gonna do a box opening of this and then I'm going to show you how it works and I'm gonna actually demonstrate it on a wall or two. So if you get something out of this video that you find useful, I would appreciate if you just consider subscribing to my channel. So let's get going. Let me open this box up and show you what's inside and how it functions. Got my Swiss Army knife that I'm not going to use to turn any screws. Break through this shrink wrap. The actual name brand, by the way, of this one is a Tovul. I think I'm pronouncing that right. There we go. Good. I like it when it matches the picture I was expecting <laughs> from what I ordered. What do we need here? Do we need batteries? I'm sure we do. So I have to go get a, a nine volt battery and put it in here. Okay, so I got a battery, standard nine volt battery. I hate it when they don't come with the battery. I like to at least have one that they throw in to start with. But I guess for the price, I can't expect any more than that. Okay, and it came right on. So let's see what we got here. Does this turn it on? Oh, I see. You set the mode with this button here. I believe the mode is, that's like I-beams, that's electrical, and that's regular wood studs. And that's deep wood studs. A little word deep popped up in there. The basic functions are there. At least they dem show there. Let me, uh, let me see what happens if I push the button here. The button to push in order to test it would be the button along the side here. So these are both sides. No, just this one side on this side here. So if I push that button, it looks like it's searching. It's actually zeroing out at this point. It doesn't see anything, but if I moved it along with a, book, a stud in there, it sees something behind there now. So a little bit, something more dense showed up at that spot of my table. It does come with an instruction sheet. Looks like almost a legal size sheet that has the instructions on it. You see, does have the two language thing? No, it looks like it's all in English on both sides. So I'll have to read through this and make sure that there's nothing that I'm missing about it. These things are pretty straightforward to use. So we'll, we'll make sure it gives you some examples, for example, of finding a piece of bar inside the wall right here. And then these here will show you. Supposedly, it's supposed to give you the actual center of the actual stud. So that's something I'm interested in. My previous ones did not tell you the center. They only told you where it started, and then you had to mark that with a pencil, and then you had to go and continue to move it along the wall until it said there was no stud, and you marked that as the other side of it. This finding the center is a big plus. So if I have that capability, which according to the instructions online, it should, then that would be something that I really will like. 
Okay, before I go to the real wall, I wanted to remind everybody what the structure is inside a wall so you get a picture of it and how a device like this helps. Let's assume that this is a wall, uh, painted it white for now. If you opened it up, which is what I'm trying to simulate here, I cut the center part mostly out. What's inside that wall? Well, the first thing you'll see are studs. In this particular example, I've shown you have the vertical studs and you have some horizontal pieces in between the studs to give it extra security and extra strength to the entire wall. Very common, not done 100% of the time. I would say maybe about, I don't know, 75% of the time. And this is where you would normally, hopefully if it's wood studs, it's a little bit different if it's metal studs, but these you can easily connect up heavy weight objects to. They tend to be anywhere between 18 inches apart. Well, it's not anywhere. It's either exactly 18 inches apart in the United States or 24 inches apart. Usually commercial buildings are the ones that are 24 inches, however. In most residential buildings, it is 18, which is a good thing to know because once you've found one stud, you just have to use a ruler, use a three foot ruler, of course, and find out where the next studs are in each direction. Saves you some time. Or you could just use the stud finder to find them all, just to be safe and double check it with the ruler. Now, what else could there be in a wall? Well, there could be pipes. I have here a water pipe that's feeding water to a sink or a bathtub or whatever, hot or cold. And then this would be the drain pipe, a much thicker one that's uh, very cast iron uh, manufactured and very solid and, and strong. Now, if you were to hit these with a nail, if this is a copper pipe, Pipe, you could puncture right through it. It's unlikely you're going to get the cast iron punctured. You'll wind up bending the nail and you'll say, what the heck did I hit? But you don't want to try to hit any of those. And that's where a stud finder can also help you. But more importantly, the most important thing that you could have in a wall that you should be highly aware of is all electrical wires. So in this example, I have a light switch probably going up to turn the light on up in the ceiling. This is probably the incoming or it could come from either way. You never know which direction is the source to something like this unless you know how the wall was structured originally and how the electrical was laid out. So it be, could be coming in this way or it could be coming in this way. It's first feeding this little outlet here and then from there it's strung to the switch and the, the switch is just tapping off of that wire in order to feed a light somewhere else. Sometimes they put a switch on an outlet, but that's not very common. But that is the most important thing. And they usually have holes drilled through the center of the studs where these wires are passed through. And if you use a long enough screw or nail and you just happen to hit the exact spot where that wire happens to be, then you've got a problem. Now, good building construction and by code building construction in most states in the United States, you have to put a little metal plate here in order to prevent somebody from nailing something into the electrical wire. But you never know know if it was done by a professional or not or whether or not it was an older house that didn't follow that or a state where that code doesn't exist or another country that doesn't exist so it's good to have the stud finder to be able to isolate all of this equipment so I just wanted to show you this illustration before we go look at a real wall okay so let me go and find a nice clean wall and make sure that it works the way I expected it to see if I can find what electrical wire as well behind it because that's an important aspect of this Okay, let me demonstrate how this is done. So I got myself a three foot ruler. I'm putting it up here as a starting point. And I believe that there is no beam right over here. You gotta take a pretty good guess. If you tap on them, sometimes you can hear a hollow spot. It gets a louder pitch where there's natural beam. And then it gets lower, then it gets louder. So I believe it's right over here where there's no beam. That's where I wanna start off at, no beam. Take the device turn it on and make sure it's on the actual beam mode. Put it in the area where I think there's no beam. The little button on the right hand side here, I push the whole thing against the wall and I press that button. Try it again over here. Push the button down. I'm listening for a beep while I see that thing go and do this. It's actually calibrating to the wall. I heard a beep that time. So now you can take your finger off the button, but hold it against the wall and start moving in one direction or the other. I'm going to start by moving to the right. Whoops, right there. It looks like it's detecting something. I keep going. I see the little point and I hear a beep. Let me put the ruler right at that point where it starts. And now I'll head back the other way. I'm just validating that these are beams. I always like to have a ruler handy because if they're 16 inches apart, this is a residential property. 
right there again and sure enough you take a look at the ruler right there 16 so I started at 0 and went to 16 so there's a beam here and there's a beam there this ruler is now accurate and I could use that to mark it or whatever because now I know where those two beams are now if I want to check for electrical slightly different process or pipes so right over here I know I have electrical wires and they are live I have the lights on with both of these now to check for the electrical wires in this vicinity there should be some right over here near this switch box I hold this in open air after I switch to the electrical mode so let me switch the mode to electrical that's deep beam that's metal beam and that's electrical the little lightning bolt I now have to calibrate it in open air so I hold it like this and I push the button it beeped it's now calibrated to look for electrical wires so let me start where I know there's none right over here when you get see an electrical wire a little icon appears in this upper left hand corner so let me move this over whoops it's seeing something right there and now it's coming down again it didn't see the center it can't detect the center as well but this is right in this area we now know there's an electrical wire because the little icon is on which makes sense I haven't seen the inside of this wall since this basin was finished but I believe there's a beam right over here that this box is connected to and the electrical wires are running along the side of that beam so that sort of makes sense so this gives you an approximation when it comes to the electrical but at least it gives you an idea of where not to hit nails through the wall now I don't have an I-beam underneath here or any metal studs so I won't be able to demonstrate the third option which is looking for metal studs but it works similar to the electrical it's trial and error a little bit with the electrical and with the metal beams but at least it gives you an idea of the ballpark of where those things happen to be okay that completes the review of this Tavool stud pipe and electrical locator I think it's a pretty good product obviously it's not very expensive there are probably some better ones you can get out there but for my purposes this will be fine it's very accurate I thought in terms of locating the center of the studs probably more accurate than I've seen in one of these types of devices before however the electrical and the pipe locating not 100% sure about that it seemed to be a little bit more hit and miss I also don't have any confidence at all with that calibrating it in the air feature that they show you about in the instructions it seemed to do better when I just went against the wall and just calibrated there in a space that I believed was no pipe or no electrical wiring which could be a guessing game obviously but I found better results with doing that and then locating the electrical or pipe that's behind it just my experience I also found not with this one but with other ones that when you're looking for studs in a very rough surface like if somebody painted the wall with some of that paint that sticks up in little icicles or something to that nature you're never going to get a smooth run across those so something like this would have to be set on deep and then you put a piece of cardboard get yourself a nice big piece of cardboard and put it against there and press it as much as you can and then go across the cardboard and I've done that with other devices like this and it worked okay so anyway if you got something out of this video that you found useful or liked in any way please consider subscribing to my channel it would really be helpful well thank you for watching and until the next time please take care of yourself okay